Hi everyone, welcome back to Onyx Pages. I'm in Jerry and I am happy to be here. Uh, so this is our Wednesday Night Live. I'm saying this like it's uh, it's a thing that I'm gonna do and who knows, it might be. What's going on? There's an echo. Hold on one second. Oh, I know what's happened. Okay. <clears throat> There we go. Okay. I had my computer playing through my headphones and I was hearing myself and it was trippy. All right. So welcome. Uh, if you are here and you are watching, please uh, in the live chat, please open the live chat function. Please let me know that you're here. Um, so we're going to be doing two things on this live. One thing that we're going to do is talk about reading while busy. Uh, and reading with purpose while busy, and I'm going to share with you some uh, some of my thoughts on how to stay reading um, when you're in a place where you want to read, but when there's a lot going on. So just to be clear, this is not going to be a conversation about forcing yourself to read when you don't want to read, uh, or forcing yourself to read when you're in crisis or forcing yourself to read when there are other things that are going on in your life that require your attention. This is uh, a conversation about how to continue reading and stay in a reading space while having other demands on your time and other demands on your attention. So that's one thing that we're going to be doing. The second thing in the com in this conversation that we will be doing is uh, we'll be talking about six books that I have shortlisted. They are all all books. They are all books that I want to read, um, but I'm having a hard time deciding which one I want to tackle. So I am leaving the decision up to you. So that's going to be fun. Um, and if you are watching, you'll notice that in the chat, I have put up a poll. Unfortunately, YouTube chats, uh, YouTube polls only allow four options. So as I go through the books, you can vote for them and you can change your vote as things go along. Uh, and if you're interested in book number five or book number six, then you can just type that into the chat and we'll add up the results and see which book I'm going to read next. All right. So I'm not going to be online very long. It is a weekday evening. And of course, this is in part a live about reading while busy, uh, which I am. So it's not going to be a marathon today. Uh, so I'm just going to get started. If you are watching please uh, post a comment in the chat and let me know what you do to stay reading while busy um, and feel free to ask any questions. But I'm just going to get started with um, some of my habits and tips. So uh, in no particular order, the first thing that I think about when I'm trying to make sure that I stay reading is uh, to figure out where I like to read and um, what are, what the conditions of a successful reading period actually are. So I really enjoy reading on the commute. Uh, I know that I'll have half an hour of reading. I like putting in earplugs or non-lyrics music. And when I get on the bus or the train, I like to prepare myself for success. So I have my book or my Kindle and my bookmarks, I have my markers, I have my stylus, whatever I'm gonna use to annotate while I'm reading. And my route is pretty direct. Uh, so even though I am switching from trains to buses and then walking, I know that I'm going to have at least 20 minutes uh, where I'm seated or even standing and reading uh, and, and then you know, another five minutes. So I know that I can read. I also read and walk um, in my building. So when I'm walking to work, I know my route really well. So I can actually read a book and walk and not bump into anybody. So those are things that I do on my commute. So if I take that time together, if I'm able to read for 25 minutes uh, to work and 25 minutes coming back from work, that's 50 minutes of reading that I've been able to do in the day without actually adding anything at all to my day. 
So that's one thing that I do. Um, I also like reading in the bath. So if I am having a really busy time, I will draw a bath and then I will have a candle. Maybe I'll have some non-lyrics music. Maybe I will not, but I'll have my book and my annotation tools with me in the bath and I read uh, in the tub. I like reading in the morning before I leave for work, but I very rarely have time to do that. When I have a sustained period of time, like on a weekend, sometimes I will just get very cozy, um, usually not on my bed because I use my bed for sleeping. So sometimes when I start reading on my bed, I can only get through a page and then I've literally fallen asleep. So I'll sit on the couch or I'll sit here in my little reading nook area and I will set myself up with all the things that I need. Uh, sometimes I'll put up a little screen so that I can um, so that I can read as well and just just block everything out and create a little sort of oasis for myself. So um, figuring out the time that works for reading is important to me, figuring out the space uh, that I need. Also being really aware of when, my brain works really well for reading for pleasure. That's also something that I do. So I know that at the end of the day, I'm quite tired. I don't have a lot of brain space. So reading a book just might not work. But in the mornings on my commutes, um, those can be great times. Or on the weekends, the weekend mornings, those can be really wonderful times uh, for me to read. I think your choice of book also makes a difference. If you know that you, if, if I know that I'm in the mood for um, something that kind of takes me away, uh, then I might go for uh, a fantasy, a uh, second world fantasy, or I might go for a graphic novel, something that is gonna really aggressively take me outside of my lived experience. If I'm in a really cerebral place and I want something uh, that will support me staying in a cerebral place. I might read some, you know, complex science fiction, for example. Um, hybrid reading is also really excellent if I know that I'm going to be on the go or I have a lot of obligations that will have me using my hands. I might get a book uh, that I can also listen to so that while I'm doing things like chores, or going for a walk in nature or making my way to somewhere, I know that I can listen to the book. Like if, if I don't drive on my own a lot, I just, I commute most of the time. But if I know that I have a long drive, I might play uh, a book as well. So I think it's a combination of making sure that I am optimizing the time that I have for reading. Now, there are a couple of things about my life that are important for me to tell you. Uh, we don't we don't own a television. I haven't had a television for over 20 years. I don't think they're necessary. Um, and uh, so so I don't have a TV and I don't watch a lot of television on my laptop. So, you know, we have a lot of the streaming services, but I'm not really that much of a TV watcher. So it's not like I have like I need to choose between um, watching television and reading. I will scroll social media, I will watch YouTube, but I don't, um, like I don't come home and like watch TV really. It's if, if I'm going to watch TV, it's because I'm following a series. Um, so that's one thing to know. The second thing that I, to know about me is I do not like talking on the telephone. Um, and so I do that as little as possible. <laughs> And so again, I don't have to choose, like I don't have a lot of people calling me. People who love me know that if they wanna reach me, they should text me. I don't like talking on the phone. So um, again, it's not like the phone's ringing off the hook. The ringer is usually off anyway. So again, I'm not choosing between uh, telephone calls and reading. So I think, you know, if you have a lot of inputs in your life, you've got it a television that you watch, there are shows that you love, um, if you love gaming, if you like talking to people on the telephone, um, if you have a lot of pastimes that would take you away from reading, see if 
you're somebody who might be interested in multitasking or see if you might want to give up some of these things. I, I can tell you that one of the reasons why I gave up having a television is because when I had a television, a lot of the shows that were on air were not representative and they weren't interesting to me. And so I didn't want to spend a lot of my time watching shows that were boring or were distracting. And so books, I, I feel like there's a greater variety of good books than there are than there is a variety of good television shows. And so um, that's that's like a, a choice, a principal choice that I've made about reading versus um, watching television. So those are some of my ideas about reading while reading with purpose while busy. Um, I also use any sort of like plane rides, train rides, anything like that. I plan and I also plan out the length of the books that I want to read. So if I know that I'm going to be on a one hour flight, I might take a novella or a short story collection and just try to build in reading as my downtime if I am traveling for a conference or a convention or work or so on. And uh, yeah, that's what I do to read while busy. I'll probably think a little bit more about this and see if there are any other tips, but making sure that you're buying or borrowing books that are interesting to you, because if you're buying things just to jump on the bandwagon, it's gonna be harder to get to those books and it's gonna be harder to finish them because you're not actually interested in them. So making sure that you are, um, collecting books that are interesting to you, I think is also super important. Okay, so um, let's see some of your comments. And again, if you are watching, please let me know in the chat. And there's also a poll that I'm going to ask you to complete in a moment. Hi, Wonder. So for me, you say you try to swap screen time for reading time when possible, reading during breakfast or during cool. Reading and eating, I haven't been able to uh, to master that. Oh, on your lunch break. Awesome. You like to read while eating breakfast or with your morning coffee. Very cool. Uh, you've been using your library cards to read ebooks so that you can read on multiple devices instead of scrolling on social media. Yeah, I um, social media is such a time, time drain. Um, I mean, I'm on social media right now, so obviously I'm benefiting that from that, from you all watching this. But um, I think really um, eliminating the social media that doesn't serve you. I, right now, I'm really enjoying Instagram. I'm not spending as much time at all on Facebook, and I don't spend time on Twitter. So um, really, I spend most of my time right now on YouTube and on Instagram. I don't have a TikTok account. And I really only can be on two, really, two social media platforms at once. When it's more than that, it's 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 too much for me. Um, okay, and you've been using your library more since 2022. You've wasted so much money on books that you ended up not liking and was disappointed. Yeah, that it, it's hard, right? Because if you're collecting and you're buying things, obviously you don't know that you're going to like the book until you finished it. So. Uh, it can be it can be difficult. Um, for me, I purchase books in part because I I'm a book collector um, of black science fiction and and fantasy. So my my library is very niche, um, but it's it's difficult if if I'm buying books and then I end up not liking them. I end up owning a lot of books that I'm not interested in. Um, luckily, there are ways to either gift them away or give them away or um, maybe if I'm collecting books from a particular writer, it doesn't really matter to me that much. If I've read them, I just want to, to collect them, but there are only a few writers like, like that. So I've, um, I've tried to focus on reading the books that I have and not buying things because they're hyped, because it can be a lot of pressure, uh, to, to do that, especially if you are a content creator. All right, so let's get into the books that I have that I want to read and and hopefully you can help me. All right, so I've just finished a collection of short stories. Uh, I enjoyed it. 
I find with any collection of short stories that I sometimes get tired toward the in the third the third part, like the last third of the of the collection, um, because short stories you have to really fall into a new world like every twelve pages, and it's it's a lot for me. Um, and so because I just finished a short story collection, I do not want to read another short story collection for for a little while, maybe a couple of books, which is sad because there are two short story collections that I have that I really want to read. But I know that if I read them now, I won't be able to take them in. And the first one is Drinking from Graveyard Wells by Yvette Lisa Lovu. I can't wait to read this book. I can't wait to read this, but I'm going to wait. And I'm going to wait because I can't do short stories right now. And the other one is Reliving Mythology. And this is um, a collection of Black magical stories and poetry. And this um, collection was um, edited by Voodoo Knots. And again, it's a collection of short stories and, and poetry, and I'm, I'm not able to read that right now. Um, but as soon as I have done a few sort of longer form works, I will be right back to short stories and I will pick those, pick those up. But for now, I need something that's around, I don't think I'm ready for a tome right now, but I, I would try. So knowing that I don't want to read a collection at the moment and that I do want to read a longer form work, I would like to, yes, yes, Trishal, both of these, uh, both of these titles are gorgeous. The covers are stunning. Okay, so here we go. Get your notebooks ready. Let me know if you're ready in the chat by just typing in ready. Are you ready? Um, I'm asking you if you're ready because I want to take you through the book. So I'll just wait to see if you are, because I need your help. I need your help choosing the books. Okay, you're ready. Great. Okay, so book number one. So the way that this is gonna work, thank you everybody. The way this is gonna work is that as I, I'll tell you the number of each book, and as I tell you the number of the book, if you would like me to read that book next, um, then just vote for that book, okay? So book number one is Darknesses. Darknesses by Lachelle Seville. This is a novel, and it is a lesbian vampire novel. A lesbian vampire novel, it is coming in at 468 pages. This is a commitment. I think I'm ready for this. I could be wrong. It's got a ton of content warnings and it doesn't really have um, a description anywhere about what it is. It's just Darknesses by Lachelle Seville. I think it's a black lesbian, yeah, a black lesbian, um, Dracula retelling. So that's book number one, Darknesses. That's all I got to say about that. Okay, so that's book number one. Um, as we go through this, if that's the book you would like me to read next, I will do it if that is what you want. Um, yes, so Wonder, you remember sharing this book earlier. It's high on your TBR. Good to know, good to know. Okay, book number two is Speculation by Nisi Shaw. And I'm attracted to this book because obviously cover, but it is uh, middle grade, I think. And it is about a little girl who gets these glasses and the glasses are magic. And I love glasses, especially magic ones. And it just seems very sweet. And I love Nisi Shaw's writing. This book is coming in at about 230, 230. Is that Nala Hawkins? Did Nala Hawkinson blurb this? 
No. But anyway, still exciting. And I'm, oh, there's also a family tree in the back, which is cool. I didn't notice that before. So this is speculation by Nisi Shawl. Little girl gets some glasses. I think she inherits these glasses, finds out that they're magic. They do stuff. She's excited. We're all excited. So this is speculation. So book number two is Speculation by Nisi Shawl. Okay. Book number three is The Space. It's really bright. The Space Between Worlds. Okay. So book number three is The Space Between Worlds by Micaiah Johnson. There is a, I believe there's definitely a queer, there's some queer desire in this one. There's world, like traveling uh, between worlds. I feel like there's, yeah, this is sort of multiverse. Like there are different yous in different worlds and there's a romance situation. There's class disparities and marginalization and there's a bit of like a mystery doppelgangers like very um it's it's very i don't know it's not quite a, it's not a space opera because it's not taking place in space but there's a lot of like travel through time and space and then some sort of lesbian desire desire love thing uh and i and i know from people who i respect that they really enjoy this so that's micaiah johnson and the space between worlds that's book number three and this is coming in at 321 pages so science fiction romantic subplot there we go so that's number three all right book number four is when we were birds by ayana lloyd banwo i have to thank um i can only remember the oh my god Sajid, Sajid for uh, telling me about this book. Um, they actually left me a voice message and was just saying, you need to know about this book. So thank you very much, Sajid. Um, Trinidadian writer, uh, magical realism. And, you know, there's elements of, yeah, I just saw Rastafarian culture, a character named Darwin. Um, the afterlife it's a mythic love story set in trinidad and like my people are from trinidad so i'm just like magical realism in trinidad yes please and the author is i believe uh well she's from trinidad and tobago black from trinidad and tobago and so when we were birds lots of cultural meaning here for me and gorgeous cover. So there's that. So this is number four, okay? Two more. Okay, now we're getting into like even more intensity. No Gods, No Monsters is number five, written by Cadwell Turnbull. Now, I own The Lesson by Cadwell Turnbull and never read it. But then, I was told about this book and I think that I think that the energy of this book like I'm looking for something intense and immersive and I think that no gods no monsters might be more intense and more immersive than the lesson so even though I do like reading books in in the order that they were published by an author if I look at the mood that I'm in right now, I think I want something that's a little bit more immersive. So um, this is Cadwell Turnbull and this one is coming in at 387 pages. So no gods, no monsters, that's number five. And then, oh no. I only have five because I just realized that number six, this was just because I enjoyed Janelle Monet, but this is actually a collection. I pulled it off and I should have put it back. So I only have five. This is the books from Dirty Computer, the stories from Dirty Computer, but these are 
yeah, I don't want to read this because I need like a whole immersive thing. So, and I just want one story. I don't want a collection. Okay, so we only have five options. So again, number five, No Gods, No Monsters by Cadwell Turnbull. If you'd like to see me read this, then just put number five in the comments. Number four, When We Were Birds by Ayana Lloyd Banwo. If you would like me to read number four, then vote for number four in the poll. Number three is The Space Between Worlds by Micaiah Johnson. So if you want me to read that, vote for number three. Number two is Speculation by Nisi Shawl. Thank you for your comment, Paris. You think that the glasses from Speculation are from her grandfather, so thanks very much. So this is number two. And then number one, Darknesses, The Tome by Lachelle Seville, the lesbian Dracula retelling situation. So those are the five books. So I'm going to give you a few minutes to vote and then we'll be done. Um, so let's just see some of your comments. RC, I have the space between worlds on Audible and plan to listen to it during my road trip this weekend. Awesome. Let me know what you think. Okay, Chriselle, you voted for number five. Paris, when we were birds, been meaning to read it. Okay, so vote using the poll if you're able to. And Black Diva, also um, vote using the poll. And I'm going to close the poll right after I finish, if you can. So those of you who are voting in the chat, are you voting in the chat because you can't vote in the poll? Or are you just also giving me your comments? Because I'll have to add your votes, which is fine. Just let me know. Okay. So just to close on um, the idea of reading with purpose and reading with purpose while busy, um, I think one of the challenges is that if you are reading with purpose, meaning that you're choosing your books mindfully, you're reading uh, with a goal in mind, um, like you just you just want to, um, you know, uh, read fiction that will help you better situate yourself in the world or help you understand an issue better or whatever it is, right? Help you tackle um, an area of oppression or privilege or help you imagine alternatives because this world is just worlding and you're tired and you want something else, then those those are, are definitely ways that, um, uh, that that reading can help you and that that you can stay engaged, right? If you're reading things that are purposeful that that call to you, not just things that you saw on booktube, even if it's on my channel, things that actually call to you. Okay, so, one person said that you can't actually see the poll anymore. Um, let me head to, I don't think I have, do I have my phone here? I do not. I do. Okay. Okay. So let's see what the poll has to say and then we'll say bye. So your channel. Okay. So based on the poll, it looks like the poll is, is it really gone? Oh, that's interesting. Are the polls time limited? Huh. Let me see if I can see it on my, uh, did YouTube, YouTube just tell me that I took too long with the poll? If it did, let's see. Oh, no, the poll is still there. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to end the poll now. And it looks like, do we even have a winner? Okay, we're going to have to do some tie breaking here. All right. So we had 30, 30. Okay. So it looks like right now there's a tie between book number two and book number four. 
So book number two was speculation and book number four is when we were birds. Oh, thank you, Emily. Okay. So it's tied between two and four. All right. So we're going to do a tiebreaker round. <laughs> so the, now the competition is between speculation and when we were birds. This is fun. Cause I, I don't know. Like, I just, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. So I'm going to do one more poll and, and then we'll be done for the evening. Okay. Let's see if it allows me to do another poll. Let's see. Okay. It looks like YouTube is not going to let me do a poll. So why don't you uh, type your choice in the chat. Would you like me? Oh, wait. Oh, wait. It's now letting me do a poll. Okay. Which book? One or two? Oh, I'll do the title. So that's easier. Speculation and when we were birds. Okay, so the poll is up. Please take a few seconds to vote. All right, so I'll just read the blurbs while you're voting. When her little sister uh, breaks, oh, what's Winna's glasses? Ah, yes, you're right. So their grandfather gives Winna an old timey pair of spectacles that belong to her great aunt Estelle. The specks are silver and perfectly circular with tiny stars on the bridge and earpieces that curl all the way around her ears. Best of all, they're magic. Because when Winna makes a wish beginning with the words, what if, that is when she speculates, the spectacles grant it. Winna wishes she could see ghosts and soon she meets not only the real Estelle, but Estelle's grandmother, Winona. Nearly a century before Winona had escaped from slavery and ran north with her baby, Key. But Key was stolen from her under mysterious circumstances and now Estelle and Winona have a mission. For Winna, find Key. He's still alive. He doesn't know the whole truth. And unless Winna can solve the mystery and bring him home, a powerful curse called the burden will smother their family's lives and Winna's mom could be its next vi victim. This beautifully written historical fantasy by an award-winning science fiction author offers new twists and turns in every chapter and will have you taking a fresh look at your own family's roots. So that's speculation. And the other book is When We Were Birds. In the old house on a hill where the city meets the rainforest, Yejide's mother is dying. She is leaving behind a legacy that now passes to Yejide. One St. Bernard woman in every generation must shepherd the city's souls into the afterlife. But after years of suffering, her mother's neglect and bitterness, Yejide is looking for a way out. Raised in the countryside by a devout mother, Darwin has always abided by the ancient Rastafarian vow not to interact with the dead. He's never been to a funeral, much less seen a dead body. But when the only job he can find is grave digging, he must betray the life his mother built for him in order to provide for them both. Newly shorn of his dreadlocks and his past a determ and determined to prove himself, Darwin finds himself adrift in a city electric with possibility and danger. Yejide and Darwin will meet inside the gates of Fidelis, an old and sprawling cemetery where the dead lie uneasy in their graves and a reckoning with fate beckons them both. A masterful work of lush imagination and exuberant storytelling, When We Were Birds is a spellbinding and hopeful novel about inheritance, loss, and love's seismic power to heal. They do both sound very interesting. Okay, voting has ended. I am going to close the polls and let's see who the winner is. Ooh, okay. The winner, Tommy, can you guess which one do you think it is? Do you think, 
the winner was speculation or when we were birds when we were birds the winner was speculation oh my goodness <laughs> okay it's a lovely cover it is a gorgeous cover so the winner is speculation everyone i want to thank you very much for helping me choose this book i am going to start it as soon as possible it may be tonight it is likely going to be tomorrow on the bus um but uh, i really appreciate you helping me read with purpose if you like this help me choose my book situation please leave a comment in the the comment section of the video not the live chat um and let me know and then maybe what i'll do is do this kind of video more often where i talk about a topic and also ask you to help me to choose the next book and i will be sure to keep you posted on instagram and on youtube shorts and also in my currently reading long form videos to tell you a little bit about how this book is going so um, thank you very much for joining. Yes, it was fun, Paris and Emily and everybody. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your week. Please feel free to tell me what you're reading and how you read with purpose while busy. All right. Bye, everyone. Thanks for watching.